In this video, we'll discuss the features on Teal Swan's face that point to a high capacity for intuition, as well as features that point to a need for fun, laughter, joy, and wit. Enjoy. In today's face reading, we're going to be reading a woman named Teal Swan. Now, I don't know a lot about her. I've heard about her. I've even seen some video clips of her, but she is a speaker and an author, and I know that her content and the stuff she talks about deals with spirituality and things like that. That being said, a number of people had asked that I read her. So, with all that being said, I'm going to talk about the key features. But as always, if you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm happy to have you here, but please go up here and watch the 5-Minute Crash Course face reading video. That is very important if you've never seen a face reading, just so you understand what this is and what it isn't. And then if you are finding value in my content, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, leave comments, good ones and bad ones. That's how my channel grows, and I'm always appreciative of that. And looking at her face, there are a few key things that leap out right away. So the first one is fire markers. So when we look at face reading, there's five key elements, fire, earth, metal, water, and wood, the five external rhythms or phases in the natural world that are reflective and present in humanity, in people. So we all have different allocations of these. Lots of different systems across the entire globe throughout history talk about some themes like this. There are ideas and notions around this kind of thing. The Vedic tradition has their elements. Chinese medicine has their elements. But it's basically this breakdown in this understanding that human beings are an extension of the natural world. So when I'm looking at her face, what I see are fire markers, and that's characterized by pointy features. So anytime we see things come to a point, we're going to be seeing fire. So if you look at her face, there's some there's a pointy energy to her face. She's got pretty sharp points at the end of the mouth. She's got somewhat of a pointy nose. She has the eyebrows that come to a point. The inner canthus of her eyes are pointy. There's a lot about her face that has points. And so when we see this, again, this is fire element metrics. So the basic idea with face reading is if you carry the elements, you must embody them. If you want to live a long time, you have to use the thing that you are. The things that you carry, you need to be wielding those in some capacity. So fire element themes relate to future fame and luck. It relates to laughter, joy, spontaneity. It relates to the spark of life. It, re it relates to wit. It relates to all kinds of things that are in that spectrum. So for a person like this, that would be one of the key features that I would say are one of the key themes that the person needs to be living, living given their features. Now the other component, the other thing that I saw and that I thought about in relation to this is the fire element regulates four organs. So in Eastern medicine, all of the elements relate to organs in the body and it regulates the energetics of that organ. So the heart though, has four organs that it regulates, not just two. Typically for most elements, there's two organs. With the fire element, there are four because in Eastern medicine, the heart is seen as the emperor. It's where the seat of the consciousness or the soul of a person sits. It's in the heart organ itself. So it regulates four things. The heart, the small intestine, the pericardium, and something called the sanjiao or the triple burner, which is basically a symbolic understanding of the endocrine system, how our hormones fire, how our jing, our life force, our constitutional strength is circulated through. So what that also means is that it relates to spirit. Okay, the fire element relates to the soul. So again, I don't know, I'm not super familiar with her work, but by facial metrics, I would, knowing that she talks about spirituality, again, me not being predictive in any capacity, this points to her living out the themes of her face to a degree. The fire element relates to the soul, and if she's talking about spirituality and that's part of her messaging, that fits for her. That's pretty nice. So again, this is uh, life nourishment. The whole purpose of face reading is to point out features and say, if you want to nourish your life, your life force appropriately, you've got to be doing the things that your face carries. So pretty interesting there. Now, she also does have what they would call a very dominant third eye or the, the middle eye. So, you know, if you look at the... The eyes, in Eastern medicine, the eyes are seen as a projector, how we see the world actively, kind of in that verb tense, like the action of seeing, and then also they are a receiver, projector and receiver. So the eyes take in. We can see beautiful things and have it impact us. We can see very awful things and have it impact us. So the eyes are a two-way street. But if you think about the eyes, it's very indicative 
facially, symbolically, of the left and right hemispheres of the brain. We have one part of the brain that is very logical and analytical, and we have another side that is very emotional and intuitive. And the two eyes are representative of that in facial reading. That idea is that the two eyes are basically two extensions of the brain, and the middle ground is the middle eye, the space right here. Lots of traditions talk about this, and they say true genius comes when the left and right hemispheres blend appropriately. And just as a, as a side note, Leonardo da Vinci, they say, was a person they think had almost perfect hemispheric balance of the left and right sides of his brain, which is why he was such a genius in the arts and science. Outside of that, this area on her is open, very like very dominant. Her like the, the, the bone itself is articulated well here, you can see it, and there's a wide open spacing through the eyebrows. And so that area is pretty clear. Now, some people have this and you know it, it doesn't always mean one specific thing, but you have to look at the geography. The middle eye relates to hemispheric balance, taking logic and rationality and then taking emotional components and emotional ideas and intuitive themes and blending them and that's really where the harmonic of insight comes from. So this area is very dominant on her face. She's got like one of the most open middle eyes I've seen in quite a while. So that's pretty interesting. Now she's also got some really dominant um, wood metrics also. She's got a really strong jawline. This relates to vigor, drive, um, aggression. Aggression isn't always bad, but just aggressive tendencies. Um, the ability to push through to do those kinds of things. And she's also got a really dominant chin. Now that's a water element feature and relates to the willpower. And on her chin, she's also got a little divot here, which you can see in this picture pretty well. That's an attention marker. So whenever we see dimples on the face, when we see things wrinkle up on the face, when we smile, those are all fire metrics, but dimples in particular and this little divot here, those are very indicative of people that handle attention well. So if we start to look at her life thus far, at least for what, what little I know about her, being a speaker, being an author, this is a person who's receiving a lot of attention. So when we look at faces like this, you know, it's, this is not for me to be predictive. As I always say, that's not the point of face reading. It's to say, hopefully, when we read a face, my job as the face reader is to ask people, are you living these metrics? Are you doing the things? And from what I can tell, it looks like she is. So pretty interesting in terms of that strong chin, strong wood. And the last little piece I'll talk about her when I'm looking at her face is that I see she has high set ears. Now I don't talk about this a lot, but the ears are representative of the kidneys. You can think of the ear, it's shaped like a kidney. We have two of them, two kidneys. And the kidneys, the water, that's, which is, regulates the water element, that's the theme that relates. Water element regulates the kidneys and the bladder. But the kidneys are the source of our jing, our constitutional strength, how our genetic heritage and how our ancestral strength and weaknesses, how they come into our life and express in our life terrain. So the ears are sort of like an external marker for your ancestral battery. Right? The genetics and the genetic things that can be expressing from your ancestral lineage are indicative of the ears. For one, she's got big ears. That's a big water feature, but the ears are high set. And so in face reading, the higher set the ears, you can think of this as like ancestral or genetic expression and access to our gifts, her ears sit high. So what they say in face reading is when the ears sit a bit higher, what this points to is that a person will come into success usually earlier in life. Lower set ears, people come into their, their relationship with success later. Now success is kind of a vague term in the East. Success really has to do with, in the Eastern context, your relationship to your life path and how you feel about it. So it doesn't mean that you've necessarily made heaps of money. You know, if you have high set ears, does it mean you're making millions of dollars at 22? Not necessarily. I bet people who are like that though. But what it does mean is that your relationship in terms of how you feel about your relationship to being successful, the higher the ear, the earlier that usually happens and the lower set the ears, usually that happens a bit later in life. One isn't better than the other. And the thing to remember about our faces, they're as unique as our fingerprint and they're sort of an ex our features are an external marker saying, this is how your life terrain is gonna roll out to a degree, but everything is up for augmentation depending on how we choose to live, what we decide to do, you know, how well we regulate our life force. But these are some of the key things that I noticed about her. She also has, I'll say this, my last 
talking point was technically her ears, but she also has something called seductive peach luck. So the peach lucks, there's one for each of the elements, fire, earth, metal, water, and wood peach luck, and that relates to a type of luck that is expressed through the face that we can have access to and use. We all have some degree of luck, and I'm not going to do a deep dive into what luck is in the context of Eastern philosophy, but with her face, she's got that seductive peach luck. Now, when we hear that word, seductive, it relates to the water element, people often think that it's about being sexy or seducing. And seductive means more about allure, mystery, and pulling in. So when people have this look, she has kind of a cloudy, misty look to her face and to her eyes. The way the shen or the spirit comes out of the face, there's sort of this misty quality, seductive in the sense of pulling in and alluring. And so typically what people, with it, when they have this look on their face, the way the spirit animates through the face, what that kind of points to is this ability typically, traumas that the person has experienced in their life, they're usually able to take those traumas, digest them, transform them, learn from them, and help other people get through similar things. So again, I don't know uh, a ton about Teal Swan, but what I would say is, given this luck on her face, she has an aptitude for this very likely. Okay, right, there's always exceptions to the rule, but with this look, usually it's a person who has the ability to take their trauma and make it relevant, and applicable in terms of healing for other people. So that's my read on Teal Swan. If you guys have questions, please let me know. And as always, thanks for your time.